mentioned, I am Kirsty Owen, I'm Deputy Head of Archaeology at Historic Environment Scotland and uh, Rebecca Jones sends her apologies. Unfortunately the Limes Congress clashed with this and the Romans have won in this particular case. So as I say, I'm Deputy Head of Archaeology at Historic Environment Scotland. Uh, that sounds like quite a grand title and it sounds like I should be kind of deputy boss of every archaeologist in Historic Environment Scotland. Unfortunately that's not the case but it reflects the fact that I've got a role in trying to pull all the archaeologists in HES forward in the same direction. And that direction is Scotland's archaeology strategy, which is what I'm going to talk about today. So uh, uh, the archaeology strategy was developed uh, following co uh, public consultation in 2015, taking its lead from our place in time, which was Scotland's first ever strategy for the historic environment, and going further, which is the national strategy for museums and galleries in Scotland. It brings together organisations in the sector which are key to kind of pulling archaeology in Scotland in the same direction and that direction should involve uh, well essentially promoting uh, best practice in Scotland, working together to achieve this, promoting professionalism, the sharing of resources, greater collaboration, better communication, embedded archaeological education and advocating skill building and innovation throughout our sector. So in this paper I'm going to reflect a little bit on our progress to date and any issues which we've encountered, which I'll approach delicately, because I'm aware that there are other individuals in the room who are also working on Scotland's archaeology strategy, and um, <coughs> basically look at the way, the progress that we've made so far, and also the ways in which we've tried to acknowledge the multifaceted nature of the discipline and address underrepresented areas and underrepresented parts of that discipline at a national level. Translating the commendable aims into the of the archaeology strategy into a high-level documents well, from a high-level document into realistic deliverables, which can be resourced and are sustainable, has been challenging. Also dealing with the uh, fragile bunker mentality, which can exist in certain areas, and also managing our expectations. So, uh, Scotland launched its first ever archaeology strategy in 2015, which was accompanied by a delivery plan, which came along approximately a year later. And uh, we're... With a, with a number of other organisations leading on a range of activities which <coughs> aim to meet the aims and expectations of the strategy. So the strategy has five aims, and these are delivering archaeology, which is led principally by Historic Environment Scotland, enhancing understanding, which is being led by the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland, uh, caring and protecting, which is led by uh, Algeo, the Association of Local Government Archaeologists in Scotland, and also the National Museum of Scotland, uh, encouraging greater engagement, which is being led by Archaeology Scotland, and Innovation in Skills, which has been led principally by CIFA. So, as I mentioned, Historic Environment Scotland is leading on AIM 1 and uh, has a key role in the delivery of all five areas and also providing funding to support the delivery of the strategy. So, AIM 1 states that through communication and innovative practice, we will uh, foster a culture of collaboration and ambition locally, nationally and internationally. At the heart of the strategy, necessarily, is a desire for collaboration across the sector and uh, closer working relations. Basically, if archaeology is truly for everybody, then its aims must be determined collaboratively, and we should all be pulling together in the same direction. So that's a little bit more about the, uh, the various aims of each bit of the strategy that we're looking at. So, so I'm trying to skip forward ever so slightly because I don't want to miss out aim five, as I say, see if I'm in the room. So I'll be apologizing yet again if that's the case. So moving on just briefly on to, on to who Historic Environment Scotland are. We are the uh, lead public body for the uh, historic environment in Scotland. We were also established in 2015. Uh, we are, we are uh, given a grant from the government every year which enable us to carry out our activities in line with our corporate plan together with income from charging and revenue through our properties and care. As part of our agreement with the government, Historic Environment Scotland supports the historic environment through the provision of £14.5 million pounds in grants every year. Out of this, 1.4 million is set aside for archaeology. Originally set up to deal with, uh, with rescue archaeology, the archaeology program, which is what our archaeology grant scheme is known as, um, essentially, the, well, rescue remains a, key, a kind of key element of that. We are also using it to deliver the five aims of the archaeology strategy and to prioritise decision-making around funding. So our program is ever, ever um, oversubscribed annually every single year, so we help to we kind of use the archaeology strategy in order to determine where our resources are going to go. So that's just a little bit more about our grant funding in various different places it goes to. So the crux of AIM 1, as I mentioned, is to ensure that archaeological practice in Scotland is, works for everybody, is open to everyone and is visible to everybody. Here I will outline some of the key actions from our delivery plan and what we've put in place so far, and some of the issues which we have encountered. 
So this is one area which we've progressed reasonably far on to date. We are looking to produce a source of information for postgraduate students and others on projects which have remained unfinished across the sector in Scotland. And for a variety of reasons, have been left incomplete and need to be written up or possibly readdressed. So this aim is all about making information available from projects which, as I say, have been, for whatever reason, haven't been completed. Maybe they've been, the excavator has died or perhaps funding has run out. They haven't been properly resourced through to the end. The Historic Environment Scotland has its own legacy list and these are projects which uh, Historic Scotland and its predecessor bodies, which are our predecessor bodies, resourced and didn't quite take through to completion for whatever reason. And also there's obviously many more projects across Scotland which have not been completed. So this aim is all about making information available from these projects and enlivening them with new thought and new method. We've begun this process by looking at Historic Environment Scotland's own legacy list and projects which have not yet been completed by ourselves. And the first region to be tackled is the Highland Local Authority area, which is an area roughly the size of Wales. The reason why we've gone with this area in the first instance is because it's currently in the process of setting up a regional research framework um, through ARCH, which are a community archaeology group. And uh, they're looking to identify research questions and gaps. So allied to this aim is a survey, which we've opened up to get people's op opinions on what sort of portal or online access point they might like to look at in the future where possibly information on um, other incomplete projects alongside our own might possibly be accessed. So the survey is actually open now and um, when I get to the end of this presentation there'll be a web address for the archaeology strategy if anybody wants to go in and put their opinions in that would be much appreciated. So uh, basically we've put up a short list online for the time being of projects which we think are quick hits but uh, through consultation with the rest of the sector moving in tandem hopefully with the regional research frameworks we're hoping to add to that list gradually as we've uh, communicated with some of the individuals who are involved in these projects. So, oh, stepping a little bit too far ahead. Right, another area we're going to be looking at uh, in the near future is to commission a review of the national approach to archaeological protection and recording to include comparisons with other countries and recommendations for improvements. Now, this is a, a slightly grand aim. Well, it, it sounds fairly grand. And it's, it's been a difficult part of aim one for us to tackle. Essentially, we're intending to look through a series of workshops at some um, areas uh, where essentially where archaeology is falling slightly short and archaeology practice is falling slightly short in Scotland, gaps in the where things aren't are quite provisioned correctly. So our intention is uh, that this objective will be fulfilled, as I say, by a series of workshops which will be run jointly by CIFA, FAME and Algeo Scotland with support from Historic Environment Scotland to allow representatives to come across the sector to look and see where, how archaeology is funded and what is being lost through loopholes. However, there is potential for this, uh, this, particular area, this particular review to cause some conflicts of interest. Obviously, there are people working within the archaeology strategy whose um, current, current jobs are kind of dependent on the way that archaeology is funded and structured in Scotland as it stands at the moment. So it's something we're having to approach quite carefully. And as I say, that aim is still a work in progress. So moving on to aim two. So aim two, enhancing understanding. I want to touch briefly on each one of the other aims if I've got time to do so. Um, but just mainly looking at the areas which require the most kind of cross, cross set to collaboration and collaborative working. So aim two of Scotland's archaeology strategy aims to make knowledge discoverable and accessible, referable and reusable now for future generations. Again, a very kind of high level aim, but translated down into the delivery plan. This currently involves the creation of uh, local and regional research frameworks, which is being led by the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland. So this is a really good way of um, kind of exploring the ways that we've, that we've managed to kind of pull together collaboration across the sector in Scotland because essentially when this aim was initially set up, we, uh, we kind of looked at some, where, what areas of the country already had regional research frameworks, looking at what Historic England had already done. And uh, we've ended up with a kind of a, a patchwork of different organisations picking up regional research frameworks and leading on these across Scotland. So as I already mentioned, the Highland Archaeological Research Framework, which, which kicked, kicked off this year, that's been led by a community group, um, the one in Argyll and Butte, which has just completed, that's been led by a museum. Um, there's one, uh, the South East, South East Scotland Regional Research Framework is being led by a local authority, and then the Highlands uh, Regional, Islands Regional Research Framework, rather, is being led by a university. So essentially, different groups are picking up different uh, regional research frameworks, depending on which of those groups has the strongest interest in that part of Scotland. And the Society of Antiquaries are kind of forming a kind of a pivoting body in between all of them, which allows them to all speak together and actually 
well, reflect the same model because all of it is modelled on historic, uh, on uh, Scotland's uh, existing national research framework, which is SCARF. Okay. Yep, so that's just some of the uh, regional research frameworks which are currently kicked off under our archaeology strategy. Oh, sorry, right, okay, I will rush ahead. So I did worry I wasn't going to get to AIM 5. Okay, right, so just looking briefly at AIM 3. AIM 3, caring and protecting. This is all about how we look after the historic environment in a very practical sense. The uh, area that I was going to focus on here was um, looking at the uh, museums and archives working route, which has just been set up. So this is looking at storage capacity, disposal practice, con um, conservation and dissemination in museums. And the working group for this actually was set up only a few months ago. And this is representatives from across the uh, museum sector in Scotland all got together in a room in Holyrood Park and are now talking about the various challenges which the museum sector faces. So they're looking to address those over the course of the, of the uh, next, next few years. A slight issue for us in funding this one, because as I say, the archaeology archaeology programme is providing a lot of the funding for this project, but because Historic Environment Scotland cannot fund other part, well, parts, of, um, this, parts of the Scottish Government, because NMS have got quite a, a major role in this the National Museum of Scotland, we're having to look at alternative ways to resource that because we can't provide funding directly to NMS. Okay, some nice museum related images. Uh, uh, AIM 4 being led by Archaeology Scotland. So Archaeology Scotland are looking to try and um, get more archaeology into education in general and kind of integrate it into the, uh, the curriculum in Scotland more completely. So as part of this, there's been a, a, an archaeology learning working group which has been set up, which brings together archaeologists working in education and uh, also educational professionals as well to try and talk about the different ways in which we might kind of integrate archaeology more formally into the education system than is currently the case. And, and actually this is some work that we ourselves are doing at the moment. Um, this is uh, the, uh, the Go Roman, uh, Roman soldier thing, teaching pattern handling box. You can tell that Becky Jones is handling putting these slides together. But essentially we've also been looking through um, the other half of my team, which is the World Heritage um, side of our team, at um, in interesting ways that we can promote individual sites. So this is an app for the Antonine Wall, which is currently available. You can download this from Google Play or from, from the iStore as well which actually tries to sort of make the Antonine Wall in Scotland, which is one of our world, world heritage sites, much more interactive. And then moving very quickly on to AIM 5. So, and I've jumped dramatically ahead in my, in my slides as well, okay. Right, so AIM 5 is all about um, skills and training as well as supporting innovation in everything from archeological project management through to the application of cutting edge scientific techniques. So whilst there is a desire to embed innovation in science across the sector as a whole, as a whole of the uh, strategy's five aims, we are conscious that uh, we wanted to state as a clear aim to ensure, ensure that this, this is something very tangible and so that we have very definite objectives against this, against this to deliver. Historic Environment Scotland's contribution to this aim is um, the appointment of our first ever archaeological science manager, who's actually also roaming around this conference somewhere, in order to ensure that archaeological science is embedded within our own practice and actually start to promote new innovations across the archaeological sector in Scotland as a whole, working very closely with Historic England Science Advisors. So, Alongside this, uh, I'm probably well over my two minutes now, aren't I? Yeah, okay, right, I'll run, I'll run ahead. If anybody wishes to discuss the, uh, the fantastic work that CIFO are doing on skills and innovation, particularly in relation to archaeological apprenticeships, I would encourage them to novel Kate and Pete at some point in the near future. But I will jump dramatically ahead, just to say that uh, as part of our archaeology strategy and working with the, uh, the four other lead bodies, we do have a social media presence as well. And if anybody's tweeting out from this talk today, please use the hashtag ScottArcStrat because that's what we're trying to use to kind of integrate all of our activities together under one heading on Twitter. And just coming forward, and this is our web address up at the top where you can get more information. And I think that's about everything I've got to say. Thank you.